Welcome to this training session on the Garmin Apollo GPS, hosted by yours truly, Major Updraft. Step 1. Load or mark your center point. In this example, we will mark a random point using the Mark button on the SAR map page. So I will come up here and click Mark on the soft key. I need to name my user waypoint. So I'm going to call it user waypoint 1 and I need my mission observer or mission scanner to record this point in case I hit an incorrect button and lose the data. So we've recorded and logged the point as our second step. Hit enter. Third step, go direct to that point. I'm going to utilize the direct button, use the inner knob to find our nearest waypoint, which should be our SAR001, which we just named, we can check our coordinates. We've already hit direct, now I just hit enter. I come back to my map page. Here is where I want to scroll back to the split map page. I can see my bearing to that point is 047. I'm just going to make a right turn and head direct to that point making sure the configuration of my aircraft is set appropriately. Might scroll in here a little bit closer to our point and I'm tracking towards it. Fourth step when I cross the station will be to fly roughly the nearest cardinal heading available to us. In this case, it's close between north and east. I'm just going to fly north. We have our message flashing indicating we're getting near our arrival point. As we cross the station, we need to clear our turn and make a turn now to a heading of north. Now I'm setting my track. We have no winds aloft here in the simulator but we would have to adjust for that in actual flight. Our goal is to track outbound on that cardinal heading of north for two miles. To help me, I'm going to set my VOR CDI to the same outbound heading of north. This is going to help me do the math that I want to avoid having to calculate in my head. So we've got a heading of north and our next move at the two mile point is to make a right turn. We could make left turns, I prefer right. We're going to make a right turn 110 degrees to our right. We can easily look at our VOR CDI to gain that information looking right 90 degrees plus an additional 20 degrees. In this case it's 110. As we reach our two mile point, we'll clear right and turn to a heading of 110. This is going to be a dead reckoning leg. We're simply going to fly that heading and do it until we reach our next course, which we need to define now by hitting direct and hitting direct a second time. Now my inbound course is going to be 210. Providing you have the current inbound or outbound heading set here correctly and you are using right hand turns, the next inbound course is always a large printed number right behind the OBS knob. And hit enter. I like to come back to my map page and I can see the GPS has drawn that and it's about time to turn inbound. Adequately lead your turn since the intercept angle is basically 90 degrees. A benchmark you may choose to utilize is starting your turn when the bearing is 10 degrees before your inbound course. However, don't let this fine tuning the procedure overly distract you from more important tasks. If you do overshoot the course, do avoid steep bank angles so low to the ground. This is our next step, to track inbound to the station, adjusting for winds aloft as necessary. In this case, without winds aloft, I have my bearing and my track both set to 210 and the GPS confirms I'm precisely on course. My next move when crossing the station 
will be the track outbound on the same track because we're going to keep a straight line going on the inbound leg as the outbound. So whatever heading I find works to keep me on the 210 track inbound will keep the same for me on the outbound. We have a few free seconds here, which is a perfect time to reset your VOR CDI to the current inbound course, so the bezel can do the necessary math for us on the upcoming dead reckoning leg and calculation of our next inbound course. As we cross the station, we really have nothing to do. Continue holding your heading that's keeping us on a 210 track. Unfortunately, the GPS does not extend that inbound line outbound, so we won't be able to confirm our exact position because the line won't be there, but we do have the GPS CDI showing us on course, which is accurate, and we know if we stay on the same track, we'll basically be on that same line. We'll do this for two miles outbound. As we approach our two mile point, we can look at our VOR CDI set to our inbound course of 210, and we can see that our next turn is going to be to 320. No mental math required. So we'll turn now to 320. This is our DR leg, so we want to just fly our heading. Come down and double pump the direct button and dial our next inbound course, which in this case is going to be 060. And hit enter. Go back to the map. We can see the line's been drawn for us and it's about time to start turning inbound. We'll be tracking inbound to the station, choosing a heading that keeps us on track, and we repeat this procedure the same way we did for the other inbound. During this inbound leg, we will change our VOR CDI setting again for our inbound course of 060 so that we have a calculation for our next right turn as well as what will be our next inbound course. I encourage you to subscribe to the Major Updraft channel in order to catch future training videos. Thanks for watching, and remember, knowledge and proficiency promotes safe flying.